In this video, I want to establish additional rules for counting valence electrons. Now, in the previous video, we introduced valence electrons as the electrons in the outermost principal shell, and more importantly, the electrons that are involved in chemical bonding and establish the reactivity for atoms. So um, these are going to be very important when we're discussing periodic trends. Um, a large part of the, the organization of the periodic table centers around reactivity and this configuration of valence electrons. So I want to make sure we're clear on the rules for counting these valence electrons uh, before we start to talk about them in any more depth. So in some cases, counting the valence electrons is extremely easy, right? So let's look at one of the examples that we did in the previous unit, right? Silicone. Right, so silicone is going to have an electron configuration, the following electron configuration. Right, We have neon as the, the core noble gas. And then we have 3s2, 3p2. Right, So those four additional electrons, two go into 3s and two go into th the 3p. Right, So what's listed here in the noble gas notation, we call these your core electrons. Right, so these are known as core electrons. These are typically the ones that are not involved in any way with bonding and really have little to do with the reactivity of, um, of the substance, right? So these core electrons are more or less set. Uh, these valence electrons are the ones that denote any differences in bonding and reactivity, right? So these are your valence electrons. So in most cases, with one exception that I'll, I'll get to in a second, whatever's not captured in this core electrons in the noble gas notation, these are typically your valence electrons. So if we're counting the number of valence electrons in silicone, we will say that silicone has four valence electrons, right? The two that are in the 3S and the two that are in the 3P. That accounts for our four valence electrons in silicone. Now, let's go to another example. Let's do iron. So now iron has the following um, electron configuration. Uh, argon as the core electron, noble gas, right? We have eight electrons outside of that. We got 4s2 and 3d6, right? So um, this is where a little bit of confusion, at least what I see from most students, there's a little bit of confusion comes in at this point, right? Uh, some students might accidentally say that this, that iron only has two valence electrons because the outermost shell is the fourth shell. There's two electrons in the 4S, two valence electrons, right? No, that's actually gonna be incorrect, right? So like I said, whatever is not captured in this uh, noble gas notation, right? This um, argon, electron configuration, everything else is your valence electrons. Even though these six electrons are in the third principal shell, this is actually, this, this shell is actually higher in energy, right? Than the 4S, right? By the N plus L rule. So really when we're talking about the outermost shell, we're not just talking about the principal quantum number, we're talking about with respect to the N plus L rule, right? So both of these would count as valence shells in iron. And so iron would have eight valence electrons, right? So we'll have eight valence electrons in iron. Okay, so let's go to another example that I, th I think we did this one in the previous video as well, gallium. Right, so gallium is going to have the following electron configuration. We got argon as our noble gas, 4s2, 3d10, 4p1. Right, so this is our electron configuration for gallium. Now, going off of the rules that we have established at this point, you might say that gallium has 13 valence electrons, right? The two in the 4s, the 10 in the 3d, and the one in the 4p. However, there is an additional rule uh, that I want to introduce. So, when counting valence electrons, we do not count electrons that are in filled D or F shells. Right, so we do not count electrons in filled D 
or F subshells, right? So the D subshell can hold a maximum of 10 electrons, right? And if you want to figure out why that is, go back to the quantum numbers, right? If we have an angular momentum quantum number of two, that means we can have um, M sub L values from negative two to positive two. That gives you five subshells or it gives you five orbitals, two, two electrons in each orbital, 10 electrons total, right? Um, the F shell can hold a total of 14 electrons. And so what happens to these subshells when they get filled is that the electrons in that full subshell become less reactive. They're really stable, right? Filling these D and F subshells make them really stable. And so they have very little effect on the reactivity and very little effect on bonding, right? They don't really participate in bonding. So uh, because of that reality, we don't count the 10 D electrons in gallium as valence electrons. So in gallium, we're only going to have three valence electrons. The one from the 4P and the two in the 4S, because we're not going to count a filled D shell, right? Since we have this 3D10, um, we're not going to count those electrons. We only count the three valence electrons, the two in the 4S and the one in the 4P. And this goes for um, any filled D or F shell. So anytime you see D10 or you see F14, we don't count those as valence electrons. Let's do another example. Um, I think another one that we did in the previous video was selenium. It has a configuration of argon, 4s2, 3d10, 4p4. So again, we don't count these three d these 10 d electrons. We only count the four in the 4p and the two in the 4s. So that would give us six valence electrons for selenium. So hopefully this clears up the um, counting of valence electrons and establishes how we determine them uh, so that any discussion on periodic trends will hopefully make more sense. Uh, but just remember this important rule where you don't count fill D or F electrons and you, you will count them if these shells are not filled, but if they're filled, then you don't count them as valence electrons. They're stable. They're not going to really affect reactivity or bonding all that much.